my ignorance and my flesh behind your cross. The only thing that will be heard, the only sound that will be heard is the word that comes from you. Father, we'll be careful to give your name all the glory, honor, and praise, and it is all said and done in the only name that matters. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and ask it all. Amen. amen. And all of God's people said, amen. amen. It is good to be found in the household of the Lord. It is good to see you on this morning, yeah. on this day that the Lord has made. Yeah. I am learning day by day to be thankful yeah. for even the smallest of things. Yeah. Say that along with oh, me, and yeah. you are just thankful to be in the place. I have to say this this is so for your son. This is my first time seeing uh, some of you since the song, so don't be surprised if I give you a hug and I almost squeeze the life out of you. But I am excited to be here, I'm excited to see you, and I'm excited to stand before you and declare what thus saith the Lord. We've got a series in the last several weeks for uh, Title God will provide, and I have another message that I would like to uh, pin uh, from the from that series. So if you will grab your copy of God's Word and go to First Kings chapter number 17. First Kings chapter number 17, verses 7 through 16. Again, first Kings chapter number 17. Verses 7 through 16. Now, last week we were able to talk about blessings from the unexpected from First Kings chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. I believe there's another word that we can find in this chapter again. First Kings chapter number 17, verses 7 through 16. I'm going to have it when you're standing. If you haven't said amen, you're still going to say way a moment. First Kings, chapter number 17, starting at verse 7, reading from the New American Standard Version of the Word, and make it a slight different word, but follow along as close as you can. The Bible says this, It happened after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land. All right. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Arise, go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for me. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Please give me a little water in a jar that I may drink. As she was going to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have no bread only a handful of flour in the bowl and a little oil in the jar. And behold, I am gathering a few sticks that I may go in and prepare for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Right. Then Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go, do as you have said, but make me a little bread cake from it first and bring it out to me. And afterward, you may make one for yourself and for your son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The bowl of flour shall not be exhausted, nor shall the jar of oil be empty, until the day that the Lord sends rain on the face of the earth. So she went and did according to the word of Elijah. She and he and her household ate for many days. The bowl of flour was not exhausted, nor did the jar of oil become empty according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke through Elijah. Can you say amen? amen. I want to use for a sermon subject this morning, Lord, I'm running on empty. All right. Lord, I'm running on empty. Lord, I'm running on empty. You may not know much about vehicles. You may not know much about the internals of Cars. You may not know much about transmission and motors and things like that. But there is one piece, of, there's one indicator that you really should familiarize yourself with on your vehicle, and that is the gas tank level. <laughs> All right. You need to make sure that you are customized, or you, that you make sure that you know where your gas meter is. Um, it will be a terrible thing for you not to really 
understand that when that light comes on, it does not mean your tank is full. In you know, other words, it means that your tank is empty. If you've uh, driven your car for any period of time, you know when the light comes on how much time you have left before you need to put some more gas in. For many of us, uh, especially I had a, a, an old uh, 94 Isuzu great pickup truck, and I knew when the light came on, I had around 25 more miles before I would have to go looking for a gas can. Uh -huh. And it was a dangerous thing when you would ride, or you would ride in my truck, or you would ride in a vehicle, and the light came on and you kept going. Um, there was one particular time I was in my vehicle and I was on E and I thought that I could make it a little longer. Uh, and I passed up several gas stations because I felt that I had 25 more miles. Um, but I then realized that it was not 25 miles that I had, it was 20. Let alone my mama didn't even know. She came in for the first time right now because I ran out of gas on Thomas Boulevard. But it's an interesting, it's a dangerous thing when you run out of gas. But it's one thing to run out of gas in your vehicle. What do you do when you run out of gas in your life? Yeah. What do you do yeah. when you are running on fumes? What do you do when you are running on empty? Oh. When it seems as if uh, you once had a full tank, but now through the various challenges of life, it seems as if you are running on empty. Yeah. And the problem with life is, it does not pause just because you don't have a lot of gas in your tank, as a matter of fact. But it seems as if you are on empty, it is when you have more problems and challenges yeah. than you did before. I would say, say it's just that life can often suck the life out of you. Oh, yeah. It can often leave you frustrated and <coughs> It can often leave you searching, not for a place where you can get gas, but it leaves you searching, where can I get a refill? And I'm not talking about a refill in the club, but I'm talking about a refill in life. How can my spirit level be energized? How can I get encouragement when everyone else around me is just as discouraged as I am? Where can I turn to to get a refill? But I want to suggest that we are entering into a text that can tell us where we can get a refill, where we can get our spirit man uh, rejuvenated. Because if I were to get into your business, I don't mean the pride, but there's at least three people in the building that can say, Pastor Herb, I came in and I was on empty. Uh, and as I hear the bones in the yeah. crowd, I think it may be a few more people than just three that came into the building on empty. It sounds like there's going to be a little bit more than 10 or 20 people. Thank <laughs> you. 
sometimes when you run on it. Because when you run on it, you can find out who you really are. Place. And notice that the text 
Deacon Jackson says, I've already commanded the widow to provide. Yeah, right. He's already. There is a blessing that God has already orchestrated, even though you don't see it. I'm going to say that again because that's very good when I say it. The Lord is orchestrating a blessing for you, even if you don't see it. I'm going to say that again because I'm going to hold it over all of my soul. The Lord is orchestrating a blessing for you, even if you don't see it right now. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I like to, when I said that, I like to look at some of the faces. 
because some of the faces in the building, first off, now you see me in here gathering some sticks. It's one thing for you to ask me for some water. But now you're saying, while you're on the way getting me some water, bring me some bread too. Go a little push it. You're asking for a little bread. You don't even know my name. You don't know my area code. You don't know my zip code. You don't know my social security number. But yet still, you're trying to ask for just a little bit too much. The Bible says that as she is going to get the water and Elijah asks for the bread, then the woman has this startling the start of the confession, the text says, as the Lord your God lives. Notice, notice she doesn't say the Lord my God. She said, the Lord your God lives. I don't have any bread. What you are asking for, I cannot provide. I don't have any bread, but this is what I do have. Got a handful of flour. A handful of flour in a bowl. Have a little oil in the jar. I'm gathering the sticks so that I can prepare a meal for me and my boy so that we may eat it and die. The famine is in the land. The drought is in the land. She doesn't have any food. She's running on it. She got a little bit of flour. She got a little bit of oil. But a whole lot of meat. Have you ever been there? Have you ever had a whole lot of need, but you don't have a whole lot of resources? And this woman at one time had it going on. But then she lost her husband. And in the Bible days, when you lose your husband, it means that you lost your resources. So now, and her son is not of age for you to go out and work. So now she is isolated. She is on her own. She is in a drought. She is in a famine. She, she's in a dry place. She's running on it. She got a little bit of flour. She got a little bit of oil. She's got a few sticks so she can eat what she can and die. Very interesting the seasons that you find yourself in. When you once had a lot, now you have a little. The interesting thing you can find yourself in. About a month ago, you were just sitting back on the couch watching TV. Just a few short days, a few short weeks later, now you're resting in a shelter. Got a little bit of oil. Got a little bit of flour. Got a few clothes. You got to recycle the things. You don't have a washer and dry, so if you say something like, they're not that. <laughs> in the land and it seems to 
as if you're not going to come out on top, but do not fear. Yes. I know that the news that you just received wasn't good, but do not fear. Yes. I know that FEMA and the Red Cross denied you, but do not fear. Because as long as God is on my side, the thing I may not have, but I still have the Lord on my side. I need somebody to pray And even though you're going through a such risk, do not fear. You want to know why you don't need to be fearful? I'm glad you asked. Because the Lord, your God, is on your side. If you don't have the Lord, you need to be scared. But if you have the Lord, your God, on your side, who shall I fear? Who shall be? Who shall I be afraid? Elijah said, said, do not fear. Do as you do as you have said. But this nigga says, before you cook your bread, and before you make your final meal, I want you to feed me first. Okay, now. The bird. Text says, got a little bit of flour, got a little bit of oil, I'm running on empty, but I need you to feed me first. This is going to test the faith of this woman, this lady. Because, and that would have been just a few of us in the building. Now, and as soon as he would have said that stuff, okay, now, Negro, I just told <laughs> Oh, my God. 
won't run out. You ever had somebody run out? Run out of your life? At the worst times, God said, I'm not going anywhere. You have a little bit left. But once I get involved in it, I will stretch it and magnify it and it won't run out. And the Bible says this. After he gives her this command, she went out and she did according to the word of Elijah. Interesting thing happened as she did what he said. The text says that what she had lasted for many days. I kind of save you. I'll save you uh, so you don't have to read all the way through 18, even though we're going to go all the way through 18. The little bit of flour and the little bit of oil lasted three and a half years. And I know you're a little down and discouraged right now. Some of us have been going from place to place. You tired of moving. You haven't moved this much since you was a kid. But God says, when I get in the when I get in your mix, not only will it not run out, but I'll give you the power and the strength to make it while you're going. The text says that it lasted for three and a half years. And the bowl of flour was not exhausted. And the joy of oil, the joy of oil did not become empty, according to the word of Elijah. This woman made it, and again, she didn't even believe in God. But God not only provided for the woman, but God was providing for his son Elijah. Because God is saying, I can provide for you even in foreign land. I can provide for you even when you're not in your own homeland. God said, I can still provide for you. And I found something out these last several weeks, Sister Lissandra, is that God can provide even when you are in the strangest location. Right now we are uh, uh, we 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 stay in a we're staying in a uh, in a uh, dorm dorm room with college kids. Um, uh, uh, so long as I found out I thought that college kids party on Friday and Saturday night, but I found out that they don't party on Friday and Saturday night because they go on then. They got campus. The big party night is Thursday night. Because the ones that don't have a Friday morning class, they staying up all
They didn't care about the neighbors that were around them. They were just too happy celebrating that they just scored a point on a board game. They started off with zero on the board game, but whenever they would score a point, because points were so hard to come by, whenever they would get a point, they would rejoice. Thank you. 